I'm George Reister, he's Ralph Amson, and this is Reister or Wrong, the intersection where sports, business, society, and pop culture meet the truth. Absolute fire. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, facts only. Make sure you check your feelings at the door because no BS is allowed. We keep it 100. So today, we got to keep it 100 about one of Ralph's favorite people, and that is Kyler Murray. His agent put out a, a message today, and he wanted to everybody to know he means business. He needs a contract extension right now. And honestly, it's a little bit laughable to me, a little bit laughable. But uh, him nonetheless. Art Bryles gets hired by Hugh Jackson at uh, Grambling State University. People are so mad about this. They gave him the white people treatment. That when they, that when it's it's like the lady that Matthew Stafford pushed off the, well, sorry, pushed <laughs> that fell off the stage while she was taking pictures of Matthew Stafford. I said push. That's funny. Um, that then they went and found her old tweets. Well, they're so mad they're checking out Hugh Jackson's tax records, and it ain't pretty, my friend. Uh, the Lakers versus everybody. Everybody is piling on to my Lakers right now. And honestly, I can't even watch, to be honest. And uh, But Ralph shouldn't be feeling that good either. Um, and because of what's going on in Ukraine, we've had to talk, about, talk to our kids about war. What the hell are you guys telling your kids? Are you telling them the truth? Or are you just pretending like this didn't happen? All right. Now, we're going to start with one of Ralph's favorite people on the, his favorite NFL team, the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray put out a, a tweet today or an Instagram post, whichever it was, with a statement from his agent. He just wanted his agent wanted to make sure that everybody understood the situation. But we really couldn't understand the situation because it was written and like, like it, it morayed when you, when you looked at it, it just became like, like one of those spinny swirly things. And you just felt like you got caught up in the matrix. So Ralph, I will let you decode this because I had to try to read it like eight times. And I was like, as I was reading it, I was like, he's not serious. Is he, did he really do this? This is the least I've been able to focus on the message of, uh, of a press release since Dan Gilbert went comic sans on LeBron James yes. after the decision. But the only thing that I could think when I saw Dan Gilbert's statement is like, this is what like the font from GeoCities websites. Why is it in all <laughs> caps, bro? Why would you send it makes it harder to read? It's and you're yelling. <laughs> so yeah, the statement is in all caps in like Kyler Murray sized font. I literally hit the same <laughs> height as him. Single spaced, perhaps a representation <laughs> of the amount of space that Kyler Murray's offensive line gave him this year. <sighs> and on a textured effing background, <laughs> single spaced, all caps, tiny font on a textured background. And all it says is, I want Josh Allen money. That's it. That's that's it. There is no there's no other message in there. There's stuff that you can kind of decode uh if you're like into zodiac ciphers or something like that if you want to go through <laughs> it it basically basically if you read between the lines which there are no lines to read between, but if you read between the lines what it's saying is that the Cardinals probably started this negotiation in a way that they're not happy about, or they didn't start the negotiation at all because they definitely, I they definitely giving, did. I, they well, definitely I, did start the process. Oh, I can I, tell you that for sure. Okay. Well, I definitely would not be giving Kyler Murray a contract extension right now. There is not a snowball's chance in hell. If I were the Cardinals that I would be giving him a contract extension that doesn't, I mean, and, and the reason why it's not because I wouldn't extend him. It's because the cost would be Josh Allen money. And he doesn't appear to be worth Josh Allen money at this point in time. Like, so it's not that he's not a good quarterback. It's just, he feels limited. He feels limited. You, right. you can never put him under center ever. 
you can't uh, – he refuses to run the ball. He doesn't run like Josh Allen runs. Co- correct. Because he any, use if, that set. If, if anybody – because he's obviously very elusive, all of those things, but as soon he's as extremely. anybody even gets near him, even if it's on a pass, he's not taking a hit to take to throw a pass. He's like, I'm throwing and falling down, bro. So, so there becomes a limp – because at some point in time when you're playing quarterback – you have to be able to stand in there and take your lumps to complete a pass. Not all the time because you want your quarterback to stay healthy, but sometimes you got to be able to do that. And the idea that this dude has two years left on his contract and this statement reads like, yo, if you want me to continue doing my job at the level that I'm doing it, then, you know, uh, then you need to pay me or else. And I'm like, what is the or else? What are you going to do? Go play baseball? There's there's no right. money in baseball for you, bro. Baseball's on a lockout right now. They might not even be playing. Cause because remember, baseball players and the owners, they've gotten in a big tizzy. They missed the entire 94 playoffs and some of the regular season. They missed like 938 games. You, 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 this may not end anytime soon. So what is your alternative, Kyler Murray? Yes, you you have a cap number of like $10 million. You've already made like 20 some million. You're going to make another $30 million in the next two years. And granted, I understand not wanting to play on less than what you're worth. But the thing is, the next contract wouldn't even kick in until after it, until after the next two years anyway. So I, I just see a, like, the timing of this was absolutely terrible. So you're going to get on there complaining about money. While you, while all of this is going on in Ukraine, like that's the biggest story in the entire world. Sports people are talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. But now you're crying about your contract right now. This is not the proper time. Should have waited like two weeks for this. And it, it's just like, come on, come on, bro. Like the fact that Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury have the same agent, the same agent. This feels orchestrated. Because Cliff Kingsbury, they're not sure about him. He wanted a new contract. Cardinals are like, nah, fam, we're going to wait. We're going to see if you can actually have a winning record on the after seven games of any season. Like, let's see if you can do that. Right. Well, first of all, Kyler Murray is not going to play baseball. You see the amount There's of space no money he likes in it. to have. Well, not only is there no money in it, you see the amount of space that he likes to have to himself on the sideline in between drives that don't go well there's no space on a minor league greyhound bus mm-hmm. you, because you don't, that's you, don't where... get, you don't get the social distance and sulk on a minor league bus and that's where he would be he's not he's not good enough to just go straight to to the majors that that's not a thing that's going to happen so baseball is out he's about to get paid he is about to get paid and wanting josh allen money is interesting considering josh allen also wanted his second contract like every quarterback does, but he didn't make a big stink about it. His teammates love him and he was paid in August, 2021. It is currently, as we are recording this February, 2022, which means that if Josh Allen and Kyler Murray were in the same draft class, Josh Allen would still be six months away from getting paid. Yep. Now there are a lot of Cardinals fans who are, looking at the fact that like it could potentially save the Cardinals money if they got this deal done before the Lamar Jackson one before the uh, Justin Herbert one and before uh, what what's the, other, the Joe about? Burrow deal he's right not, yeah but Joe Joe Burrow and and uh and Justin Herbert, Herbert. aren't going to be done at least and at least for another year minimum right, right? minimum right. So, so what the, what the, pe- what the people that are kind of advocating for, for Kyler and for uh, the franchise not to go back into quarterback purgatory, which is very interesting, by the way, because there are public comments of Eric Burkhart, who is Cliff Kingsbury's agent and Kyler Murray's agent saying that one of the reasons he took the Arizona Cardinals job is because he was excited to coach Josh Rosen. And it's very interesting considering the Cardinals were undefeated this last year, I believe, with Colt McCoy starting at quarterback. So for the Eric Burkhart statement to be like, hey, you want to go back to what the Cardinals looked like before Kyler got here? You're throwing your other client under the bus. It has as much, the improvement has as much to do with Cliff 
as yep. it does with Kyler. That's and the so marriage, they're right? They're kind of tied together. So if you're not sure about Cliff, are you sure that Kyler will work with another head coach? And think and think about this. In recent years, the last quarterbacks to be extended after three years, they are Jared Goff. How has that worked out for the Rams? It cost them a first round pick. Um, hey, it eventually won them a Super Bowl. So if the how, Cardinals want to flip Kyler Murray for somebody in three years. Okay, so uh, Carson Wentz. How did that work out for the Philadelphia Eagles? It cost them draft picks too. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, that's working out real good. Josh Allen, that's looking real good. Deshaun Watson, how's that working out for the Texans? Right, and I, I think that the only precedent that that Kyler's camp is worried about is that they believe the only leverage they have right now is to say buy now or cry later. Because if you buy now, then you're not going to have to worry about the market adjustments that come in there um, for so what? and for her. If, if I were Kyler Murray, I'd be like, okay, cool. You don't want to give me a contract extension now? Cool. I don't want it. Wait till after the season, fam. Wait till after the season. This is going to cost you a fucking mint. I am. There What's will be no hometown discount. That I'm going to structure this deal the way you have to restructure it every year until I am uh, Matt Ryan and I have like a in, in five years I got a sixty million dollar cap hit and I got you by the short and curlies kind of like a former Arizona Cardinal in Larry Fitzgerald except for he just kept hitting every single incentive so then they had to. But, Larry, will you please restructure? We'll give you more guaranteed money if you will please restructure. So listen, th this is like, and and I'm gonna steal a quote from you. This is like trying to get a raise after the worst day of your entire job, which was that playoff game, and then six months before your performance review. This is what he's trying to do. And it, listen, it just screams of tone deaf because how do you think that this is playing in the media? How do you think fans are, 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 are re relating to this? This isn't a, oh man, hey, listen, listen, we're siding with Kyler on this one. That's not what's happening. People are reading this statement like, really? Why? This feels I want to know why. I want to know why Eric Burkhart keeps turning the blowtorch on his notoriously sensitive client. And there is nothing wrong with being sensitive. If you could do your job to, to, to the highest of, uh, uh, of an ability, like that's the only thing that matters to me as an Arizona Cardinals fan. I don't care how many people that Kyler Murray has blocked on Twitter and Instagram. By the way, it's a shitload. Right. He is notoriously sensitive, whether it's him running his social media or his dad, Kevin. They are very, very sensitive to how Kyler is viewed, whether it was when he transferred out of Texas A&M. OK. Yes, I would agree. Kyler Murray is a very sensitive, sensitive man. <laughs> he's a, he's a dude who who will find a way to make it like, like if he's not happy, if something is not going his, his way. Oh, he's absolutely going to throw in the towel. Absolutely going to throw in the towel. And this statement is no different. It's frustrating. If you're a fan of a team and th this is going on, you can't like it. You can't because, and it, and it just looks so, so bad. It looks so, so bad.
So you were talking about his agent, bro. This, the the timing is bad. The optics are bad. And this is one of those. Did you run this by anybody outside of your camp before you put it out? Did you run it by anybody to say, hey, yo, I, I wonder how that this is going to play? Because this is not going over the way that they, that I, I think that they thought that it would. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think that here are the facts. Kyler Murray, sensitive to the way that people talk about him. Kevin Murray, his father, sensitive to the way that people talk about Kyler Murray. Blocks a lot of people, local reporters, national reporters, uh, Big Cat from Barstool. Like, just anybody uh, on Instagram who makes a critical comment, they block all those people, right? They just put out a statement saying that he's not about the nonsense. Ask anybody he's ever played with between the lines that he's just about that action, right? Not about the nonsense. A few days later, they come out with a public contract dispute in February. In February, which means that this is going to play out I thought you were about entire... that action. I thought you right. were right about the nonsense. Right, so we're going to have a whole off-season of nonsense because they decided to publicly negotiate. Now, you brought up the whole having uh, uh, having the balls to go in and ask for a raise after your worst day at work that happens on, like, a national stage. What's interesting is, in their heads, I don't think that's what they're doing. I think they look at the fact that he threw a couple of touchdowns in the Pro Bowl, and right after the Pro Bowl is when they made the changes on Instagram to only have two photos. To, to to celebrate the fact that he was throwing to people who were in Tampa Bay, knowing yep. that Brady was retiring, to like, you know, to, to leverage this entire thing. I think what they're looking at he's is got the, no it, leverage. Like that's the thing about it. He's got yeah, no but I think leverage. The way that they're looking at this is they didn't they didn't uh they didn't pull this stunt after his worst day at work. They did it after the prestigious Pro Bowl that everybody watches. What they're saying is it's like having your worst day ever at work, but then going to the company picnic and telling a couple of really great jokes that hold everybody's attention and then walking into your boss's office and saying, hey, you saw I killed at the company picnic, right? I'm going to need that raise. And that is, it's kind of insane. And at the same time, what are the Cardinals going to do? Steve yeah. Kime has not drafted well. He's done a good job of convincing free agents to come in, but they sort of went all in on last year and they weren't very deep. They have trouble on the offensive line. They have trouble on the defensive line. They're about to probably lose Chandler Jones. You have Patrick Peterson, who's always out here in the media killing Steve Kime. You have Tyron Matthew, who's always out here in the media killing Steve Kime. Like, the, what are the Cardinals going to do? And so I think that Eric Burkhardt is looking at the Cardinals and saying, like, I got you right where I want you. No, you the problem don't. Is the chess piece that he's using is Kyler Murray, and we all we all saw him play in yep. the playoffs. We all know what his and he was are. hurt during the season too. Like you, there are questions: Can this little guy hold up in an NFL like lifestyle? Yes, there are other small quarterbacks, but the difference is is that like Drew Brees was tall enough to go under center and play like a traditional way. And yeah. you have other quarterbacks like Russell Wilson isn't tall, but he's sturdy. Like he can take some some hits and he doesn't miss time aside from his doggone finger this year. It took a finger for him to miss to miss games. So look, so look man. So the question is, Ralph, before we change topics, will Kyler Murray be the the uh, quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals come week one this year? I believe so. I don't think he's going to leave any money on the table or anything like that or get suspended. I do think that this is a bad bet by Kyler Murray's camp. And the reason that I think it's a bad bet, and maybe even the reason that they're making this bet, is the only reason that Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray are affiliated with the Arizona Cardinals is because last time, the front office saw something going in a direction they didn't like. They hit the reset button immediately. Listen, what listen. makes you think they won't do it to you as well? Dude, I would see, see, this is why dude, if I was a GM, Oh my God, bro, we would be getting all type of shit done. Cause I would be no nonsense. I'd be like, okay, Kyler, you want out. All right, cool. Find me, find me three first round picks and you gone. No problem. No problem. Or actually, I'll do it for you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, 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 Kyler. No, no, no. 
No, you can go to the Jets. We'll we'll uh we'll we'll uh, swap you for uh for um Zach Zach Wilson. It's close. It's it's clo- closer to home. All all his folks can just drive straight down from Utah. Like we'll right. we'll 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 uh swap you out for. Oh, I bet you Car- Carolina would be nice. Actually, and as a matter of fact, we'll uh we'll uh we'll ship you to my, my Miami. They got a few first round picks coming up. I guess there are options, bro. There are okay. options. So, and as a Cardinals fan, you've just tapped into my fear vein, right? Which is maybe what Eric Burkhart and Kyler Murray have working for them is like, I mean, I could see the Cardinals hitting the reset button and trying to figure this out, bringing in a veteran quarterback and seeing what they could do with the extra cap space. However, do I really want Steve Kime to have more draft picks after I've seen what he's done with them? <laughs> <laughs> so... I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, maybe at the end of this conversation, I'm on Kyler Murray's side. But all I know is you can't say you're not about the nonsense and put out a press statement like that. You can't start the negotiations six months before Josh Allen uh, got his new contract and say that you want that Josh Allen money. You want to be in Josh Allen's league like you haven't done what he did. And you don't do what he does on the field. And you yeah. weren't patient the way that he was patient with with, with the bills like. You're not the same. You're not the same right now. And so if you think you're going to get 240 mil, like, and it's worth it to make all this noise, that's fine. But you're, are you, you're back in a client that can actually like, what is he just going to become the leader that everybody wants to see? Exactly. He's going to become more durable. Is he just going to start running the ball more? I, I don't know, man, this whole thing's a mess. And I'm at the point where to quote Tyrese, Eject your seat, cuz. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see. And that's what I'd be doing if I was a GM. I'd be like, listen. All right. <laughs> listen, I'll just take all these picks or I'll take some other players off your uh, team. Don't worry about it. If you don't want to be be here, no problem. No, no, no. We'll cut you. Don't worry about it. And and that'll get people's attention real quick. Because once you find out that that the unemployment line don't look like it, like you thought it was grass ain't greener. They'll be, they'll be like, yo, yo, I want to go play for Georgia's team because uh, I, I, I want to go for it. I want to go play for G state. Cause uh, listen, they going to win games and they ain't about that BS. All right. Hey, if I'm, if I'm Steve Kahn, I'm getting another frustrated GM on the phone. I'm, I'm, I'm calling somebody with a green Bay area code and I'm saying like, Hey, how do we get both of our asses out of this situation? Exactly, bro. Exactly. Now, uh, Art Bryles, former head coach at Baylor, who the who the NCAA did not punish for after what they said was after their uh, investigation that ended in August. They put out the release in 2021 in August of 2021. The NCAA said that the school failed to report allegations and address sexual and interpersonal violence committed on campus particularly in Browse football program. Huh. But then Browse agent came out and said, yo, our client was completely exonerated. Look, there are no penalties. But this is the frustrating thing about the NCAA quickly is you can punish a player if he gets a couple dollars, right? If he trades, you know, something for tattoos or pre- previously, you know, or signs autographs for money, the players would be suspended. But this actual crimes were committed. And they're like, we can't do anything. You guys should have done done better. And now Art Bryles is the head, is the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach over at Grambling State University and HBCU. And I hate this on so many levels. On so many levels. First of all, don't come run into black people when you need a, a savior. Like, like, like that's the, like, that's the one thing that like really bugs me sometimes is, is, is even black people will, will do this too, who turn their back on the, on the culture and then they need you back. And they're like, Hey, yo, come on. Like Kanye did with, he, he turned his back and then he was like, yo, I'm gonna make a gospel album. I'm back people. (laughs) And, and I just want to stop you real quick. Kanye's gospel album is the Art Bryles hire of music is an incredible take. Just saying. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, that wasn't his reintroduction back to the culture. 
Well, speaking for all black people, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, because for, for, for me, he made the gospel album. I was like, all right, Kanye. All right. Um, truce. Um, but no, no, but, but on a, on another note, I, I saw a lot of people saying art Bryles that this is the worst hire. Nobody should, he should never work again. All of this. I didn't feel that way initially because I'm a second chance person and I'm mm -hmm. a person who believes, okay, at what point in time can people work again? Because at some point in time, if you don't allow people to work, their only option is to commit crimes. I mean, seriously, if you're not allowed to work now, yes, there should yeah, be some penalties I, for it. I get, I get, I guess. I don't know if it applies I mean, to somebody who's a millionaire, but yeah, but I'm just saying like, if you don't allow people to work, like if you're like, okay. Oh, you went to jail or you violated a couple of our social uh, norms, then you can't work again. Right. Well, I'm yeah, I'm very familiar with the with the whole um, you know check the box can't get the job because you checked the box, but you still need to make a living because you have to show your parole officer that you are gainfully yes. employed. Oh no, so, very very familiar in my own family for sure. Yeah. So now, so then people people will be like, well, he can go work as a janitor. Here are jobs that he can have. So you don't think that high integrity that the janitor needs to have high integrity too? He clearly <laughs> does. He the runs guy across with the and keys finds to every room. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what job can these people do? So at some point in time, there has to be a way for people. Cause my thing is always like, okay, what is their path to redemption? So right. that was my initial thought. But then I was like, hold up. This fucker ain't even said he's sorry. Like, like he hasn't even admitted and mind you, I'm a second chance person, but you have to, I, I need Art Browse to at least say, look, everything that happened in Baylor, I have to take some responsibility for that as the leader, but I do, this will never happen on my watch again. I've learned from this, blah, blah, blah. I'll make sure to hire better people around me. Like, like you can toe the line to where you won't get sued in civil suits. But also be like, listen, listen. All right, bro. I get it. And he's done none of that. So it's the defiance for me that has me saying, nah, I'm out, fam. I'm out. Because all he's doing is using Grambling State. Using Grambling State to the way he can get another job ASAP. Because as soon as a Power 5 school come, comes calling, he's walking out the door 100%. Yeah, well... He didn't hire himself, so I I always kind of shift my focus to whoever was responsible for that. It's an HBCU, right? Grambling State. They just hired Hugh Jackson, um, who a lot of people really respect as a coach. He might have, uh, he might be like the biggest all time Peter Principal, to where he went like one and thirty one in a two year period. Yeah, but are we Browns sure that that was his fault though? Now that I don't know. I'd watch Hard Knocks and you watch Hard Knocks and watch the people that work under him, like uh, like Todd Haley, just roll their eyes every time he talked. And I don't, I don't know. But here, here's what I do know: Hugh Jackson is a respected offensive mind and is integral to the fabric of football. Here's what I know about Art Bryles: anybody that's in the coaching profession and has been in the coaching profession for the last 25 years thinks that man is like Belichick. Like they, no, alone. no, no, no. They, they, skills alone. Yeah. He is like the, the fact that he's even on his like third re entry at attempt um, is because Grambling wants to win. They're using him. Hugh Jackson's also using him. So I think they're, they're mutually using each other, right? Uh, the attention turns to Hugh Jackson. And here's what I say if, if, if you are about to make a controversial decision, don't open an umbrella in the storm to check the weather because <laughs> you're not going to be able to hold on to it. Just stand firm and don't respond. Right. And what happened uh, on Friday uh, was the Hugh Jackson foundation put out a statement basically saying like, we have actually fought against sex trafficking. We fought um, for victims rights. 
uh, therefore we'll essentially be the perfect people to to have a program of re-entry for like we're the perfect support system for our Bryles. Yeah. He didn't do anything wrong. However, just in case y this yes. is the perfect environment for him, right? Correct. So yeah. they put this statement out, which I think Friday news dump, because nobody really addressed it until this morning. And this morning you have somebody come out and actually like tweet about the financials of the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Which is to say, like, they only paid out $4,000 in grants last year of the 175000 or something like that that was donated to them. Hugh Jackson responded. He responded. And he said that 75% of the money that was in the foundation that got paid back to him was donated by him. I don't know how money works. That's been a point <laughs> of contention between, <laughs> between you and I on this show before. But I am watching Ozark season four right now. So please tell me, are you allowed to donate and and then pay yourself the donations? I don't there. There I don't know how is this works. A, OK, so how it works is there is a certain percentage of money that you donate that must be given away. Like like it depends on on how your taxes and who and where the funds come from. It, there, there's a lot of technical stuff to it. But yes, it is possible for you to pay a certain percentage of the foundation's funds. But but foundations get rated as well, like especially if they're starting to, you know, get large sums of public money. And there are ones that use less than 10 percent for administrative fees, which are like a plus foundations. And then there are ones that use in between 10 and 20%. Like, so it just all, all depends. That's how the found foundation life works. Or you have like Trump people who their foundation is like 75%. They like donate the item and then purchase the item with the uh, foundation funds. Yeah. That, that type of thing. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. There's, it seems like there's some shady or, things. Or buy it them themselves and then turn around and take the tax write off because it's a donation to charity. So you got the <laughs> donation for donating to it and then donating and then buying the item. Well, uh, so anyway, my hope is that this doesn't end with Hugh Jackson getting fired for tax fraud um, instead of just defending his decision to have uh, an embattled offensive coordinator on his staff. He could have just said nothing. Yeah, that is an option. It's an option. Yes. Uh, but but everybody out here seems to have Kyler Murray's agent nowadays. Dude, dude, saying nothing, honestly, is usually the optimal scenario. Have you seen those lawyers, the Shut the F Up Fridays? Those uh -oh. lawyers who say, <laughs> I'm going to have to send you the video. It's, a, it's like a pair of lawyers. I don't know if they're brothers, but their whole thing is like tweeting videos of just saying like, and remember, shut the F up. <laughs> And don't say a word. Stop freaking talking, people. Stop talking. Dude, it's it's so bizarre to me how much people talk um in in these situations and oh, so I was gonna say, says George Reister on his talk show. <laughs> uh yeah, in, in these sit situations. They're like, no, 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 I'll explain it and make it better. Listen, as a person who's been to therapy. And in my relationship with my wife. So uh, I get defensive at times because she's a, uh, like she asks a lot of freaking questions and then we'll like drill in and all of this stuff. And the therapist is like, George, stop trying to explain yourself and defend yourself. Because if you do, all that's going to do is make her drill down more questions and all of this stuff. You just have to just, you know, like, hey, yo, Listen, listen, um, you know, I understand that you're upset right now. I understand you're bothered. You know, I apologize for my part in this. You know, we'll do better next time. <laughs> and, like, yes, that will create some tension. But, listen, and Art Bryles, he needs to say sorry. He screwed up, and that's where he's at. Um, now, speaking of screwing up, my Los Angeles Lakers have screwed up big time, bro. <laughs> like, have screwed up royally. We're not winning basketball games. The team looks lethargic, lack of energy, and LeBron James is out here putting down fantastic stat lines. Fantastic stat lines. The team has lost nine of their last 12 games. There is no more hope, bro. Like, I, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. And th this is the worst part about it is. So, like, 
they got absolutely thrashed by the New Orleans Pelicans last night. Absol- the Pelicans thrashed them, dude. And the Pelicans are trying to tank. And the hey, Pelicans. I, how about how about CJ McCollum without Damian Lillard? He looks way better. How did he do last night? Because in his first six games, he had four plus four thirty plus point games. He only had two in Portland this year. He's going off. Yeah, he's he's like oh, which oh. also means that he was available and the Lakers didn't get him. <sighs> so I'm so sorry, frustrated, bro. So frustrated, and like it's so bad. And I know that we just won the championship in 2020. But this is so disappointing because I've consistently said that yo-yoing is the worst thing that you can do to fans. Yo-yoing. Like, we're great. We're terrible. We're great. We're terrible. No, like, you would rather be, you know, steady as the course. And I would rather be the Buffalo Bills lose four straight Super Bowls and go to the playoffs like 10 straight years almost than not. You know what I mean? Then, like, win a championship, be terrible. But, like, there are expectations. That's the worst thing that you can do to people is yo-yo. And, but now LeBron is chirping at fans. Like, fans are getting bad. And now I'm like, oh, my God, this must, what it be like to be a Phoenix Suns fan or, like, a Minnesota Timberwolves fan or, you know, any of these other poverty franchises. And it, it's gross. I don't like it. So, there's two ways to look at this, in my opinion. One is... The bill was going to come due eventually. How? What What bill was that? The, the 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 Russell Westbrook bill? No, not the Russell Westbrook bill. LeBron goes from city to city, breaking up young cores to play with today's stars. You could make the argument that there are several situations in which if LeBron had the patience to let things mature around him, that he would have ultimately been in a better situation they could have gotten demar no ralph i completely reject that because they could have gotten demar Derozan instead of russell westbrook okay i uh, option two george is that the bill actually shouldn't be due because this team should be able to get it done correct the bill shouldn't be due because this team is good enough that is the second way to look at it and that's the way that i'm looking at it um the if you look at it the first way, then it's kind of LeBron's fault. No, it's not. It's Rob Palinka's fault you, because Rob Palinka chose not to trade him at the trading deadline, which which means that Rob Palinka also chose to get him. Like LeBron can can say what he wants, but the GM still has to either do it or not. It wasn't I like LeBron was going to leave. I don't believe. You. I do. Here's why I don't believe you because. I would have believed you up until five years ago when my daughter turned one. Now that I have a daughter and she's six years old, I'm, I know that every decision I make in the house is ultimately my decision, but it's not, it's hers. It's hers. Like really, really like I'm driving the bus, but like (laughs) she's telling me what pedals to push, when to brake, when to use the blinker, all that stuff. LeBron has, in every situation that he has been in, he has been the de facto GM and the de facto head coach. No, At no, some point, stop. he has some responsibility here. Stop. De facto? No. Yeah. Not, in, not in Miami. He damn sure wasn't. Pat Riley was driving that bus because him, Dwayne Wade, tried to get Eric Spolster fired and tried to get Pat... Uh, Riley to come down and coach, and he was like, "Hell no, Eric Sprouse is your head coach. Deal with it." And then, and that ended ended up working. And now he's probably one of the better all time in, in NBA head coaches. So it was Pat Riley, in his infinite wisdom, was just letting James Jones cash checks on the end of the bench. It wasn't that LeBron James liked being around him. No. LeBron he, has had way more responsibility hold on, hold on, hold on, than any hold on. player. Do you realize that Udonis Haslam is still on that roster? This is what Pat Riley does. That, like, that wasn't a LeBron James decision. That was a Pat Riley decision. All right, fine. LeBron has absolutely no responsibility for the fact that the team he leads is terrible. 
It's either his fault on the court or off the court. You have to pick one. You can't say it's his fault on the court, can you? He's balling out. <laughs> he's, he's having maybe the best. He's having maybe the best statistical year of his career. Yeah, in year in year thirty eight. Um, <laughs> which, I, as somebody in their late thirties, who even on my best days feels like I can't win, I get it. I totally get it. So yeah, so this is what it must like feel like to be a poverty franchise. <laughs> what are you talking about? Were you not a Lakers fan for the like several years of uh, Kobe's Achilles issues and and the not even getting to twenty wins? But we knew what that was. Like that was just frustrating. Like we understood what that was. Kobe, Kobe was hurt. Like you got it. And then I could just like I could come into the season knowing that I was going to be cheering for the Warriors. Like I could, like I didn't have to. <laughs> hey, know. the Suns are right there. Just come on over, man. Come no, on over. No, no, no. Because because <laughs> as much as I love Chris Paul, I don't I don't trust his injury history. Like well, I, he's going to miss the rest of the regular season. Yeah, that's he's what I'm saying. The, so he should be good for the playoffs because he's going to sit out the next four and a half <laughs> Dude, weeks. I want him to get it done. I'm saying I want Chris Paul to win a championship. Like he's one of those players that I feel like deserves to win. Right? But would you rather would you rather Chris Paul get his first title or Steph cement his legacy, carrying the Warriors to his fourth championship? Oh God. I would go with Chris Paul because Steph will be all right. Either, what is, either, either way. Knowing, knowing the Lakers are not going to win a title, what's the optimal scenario for you? Lakers take out the Warriors that, on the though. way to a Suns title? I don't know title? that, though. I don't know that, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just said that poverty franchise. Yeah, but <clears throat> we're in the play-in, and we'll get AD back. So what if, what if things go fine? You see what I'm saying? Like, like if we click at the right time, if things go well, <laughs> we could make a run. This is what winning must do to you. Cause I'm just, I'm pleasantly surprised by anything good. And you're, and you're convinced that it actually can't happen. And I feel that I, this is the first time I've ever felt bad for you as a basketball fan. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you've seen, you've seen the promised land and you're like, we might be able to find our way back. I have never seen it. And so I'm like, man, it's, we could, we might, be able to get there and if we don't i'll just be lost in the same desert i've been lost in. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh my god <clears throat> bro it is sad it's a barren wasteland right right now or it feels like that but but rain may come rain may come to the mojave desert um even though history says that it probably won't um <laughs> okay so now on final topic very serious topic to be honest is the um the war in Ukraine. Now, for we're not going to get necessarily into the politics of this whole thing, but just how this is affecting our families, particularly our kids. Now, me and my kids have talked about the Ukraine situation. And the best way I explained it to them was something I read on Instagram. Uh, a lady posted, okay, let me explain to you the best way to explain what's happening in Ukraine. There was a woman who was in an abusive relationship. Like she was getting torn up, treated poorly, beat up, like physically, mentally, emotionally abused, like every type of abuse. Then she decides like 30, about 30 years ago, listen, I'm going to go out on my own, make my own life. I'm going to do what's right for me. Oh, that's great. So, so she leaves the abusive relationship her friends france and germany and spain and all of them they lift her up and they get her to you know feeling like her own self and good she's thriving all on her own and then uh 30 years later the ex-abusive uh re relationship guy he decides like yo uh, you know, tries to holler at her and she's like, listen, no, absolutely not. Block, 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 block. And then her friends, France, Germany, Spain are like, yo, homeboy's been parking out in front of your house. And she says, you know what? I saw him. He's just trying to scare me. I'm not going to, you know, play into that. I will not live in fear. And they're like, yo, are you sure? And she's like, yes. 
And then the next day, homeboy breaks into her house and starts abusing her again. That's what's going on in Ukraine. That's the way I explained it to my kids. Okay. Is, is, that, is that a fair explanation? The r- real real housewives of geopolitics? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, it's an attempt. What are we supposed to do? What, like, there, there's not an instruction manual for that. Maybe there is. Maybe we should write it. But it's the idea that, like, these things are going to happen on a national scale that other people are going to talk about. Like, you want to be able to have some input um, to be able to help your kids understand what's going on. I think I think every parent should make an earnest attempt to explain what's going on to their kids because I think that is motivation to get informed yourself. Yes. Not everybody's going to do a good job. And I think one of the reasons that not everybody's going to do a good job explaining it is – one, it's not like it's something that you can practice. You can't sit your kids down and tell them this made up thing that isn't going on in the world just to get ready for, you know, a, a, a time that is. Um, so it's not something you can practice. And two, most adults don't have their values nailed down. Mm. Right. Like that. Maybe that's something that we should do. But most adults aren't like, OK, this household believes X y z that's what we're going to tether ourselves to and if we ever leave this zone it's going to be because we've absorbed a proper amount of information that negates our values but these are our underlying values for every type of scenario right um so in in our house right um what values could i lean on to explain to my kids what is going on uh the first one is that um that human capital, human lives is the, the ultimate value, right? Yeah. So this is bad because it is going to cost human lives. That's the first thing that I need to impart to my kids. It's going to be really, really bad because there are going to be people who lose their life over what's going on. The second thing you need to, you, you need to figure out is, um, you know, for us, personal space is a, a really big thing right? You need to honor people's space and you need to honor people's property. This is a thing that you teach kindergartners hands to yourself, right? Yeah. There is a border that one country does not respect and they feel like they have their reasons to not respect it. However, in not respecting that space, it is going to cost human capital, which should never happen, right? My oldest son's middle name is Owen. I named him after Wilfred Owen, who wrote a poem called Dolce et Decorum Est. And what that poem is, is it's it describes what happens in war in detail, like somebody dying from a gas attack. Yeah. And it ends by saying, don't believe the old lie that it's sweet and fitting to die for your country. Because it's not sweet to die. It's not fitting to die. Like, it's still death. It's still grotesque. There's no honor in making war for the sake of war, right? Yeah. So – these values have already been laid out, but then it's still really, really hard for me to talk to my kids about it because, you know, they might go to school where somebody says, you know, well, this is America's fault because that's we, we like to make everything about ourselves. Right. And so my kids might want to know, how is it Joe Biden's fault that one country is invading another country? Um, and th- and that point, all I can do is explain to them what I think that person might believe, but then also reiterate that's not what we believe is that people are responsible for their actions, that you should honor people's property and their personal space and that human capital is valuable beyond measure. So war is wrong. Invading country is perpetrator in, in our house. Right. Yeah. And, and invading country is responsible for invading country's actions. Yeah. That's the best I can do because it is the way that you explained it is actually a little bit closer to like, how complicated of a situation this is like in your metaphor, not only that, like the husband believes that 30 years ago when they broke up, uh, she left over accusations of cheating that never happened. Yes. Yes. And she, and she had a friend who was a Nazi bitch and she was hanging out with that friend too much. And so it's, it's, it's every right of his to fight for his relationship to get it back. Right. Like, so uh, it's tough, man. It's really, really tough. And I will tell you, I've talked to one of my four kids about it. 
and it's the one that I believe will have a firm grasp, but I'm worried about the other three getting information before I can get to them. Yeah. Oh, dude, I totally understand and agree. Um, now, my kids, the, the thing that I wanted to make sure I reiterated to them and made sure that they understand is that whether it's Ukraine or things going on in Somalia or things going on in China with the Uyghurs, where, wherever else, that we need to be cognizant and sensitive and really think about other people's situations because we don't have to deal. And I, and I likened it to when I went to um, Sar Sarajevo. And when you walk down the streets of Sarajevo, you'll see like red circles on the ground or like red uh, things in buildings. And I was like, what are these? And they were talking about from the war in the 90s where they would be shelling the city and they filled them up with red paint or red cement what or whatever they filled it in with because they didn't want people to forget what happened. And I was like, we don't have to live in a place where we feel that and that trauma every single day. Like, yes, if you live in certain neighborhoods in the U S there is a certain amount of stress and trauma that you deal with from not feeling safe all the time. I was like, now imagine that because there are neighborhoods in those countries that are like that. Now add in that you're not sure if somebody is going to knock down your door and just shoot everybody in there or just take your mom, take your dad, take, you know, like rape you, what, whatever it is. And then kill you, bomb your, bomb your house. Like you're wondering all night, like, you know, is a, is a missile going to hit my, hit my home? Like that type of stress for adults is enough, but for kids. So just to talk to them in that way, I think they got it as much as they can possibly get it because truly we can't even get it because we haven't been there. Like I've right. been to war countries and it still doesn't. And I still can't imagine what it's like to live in that every single day because I had fear being with a military escort flying on black Hawk helicopters. Like I had fear about that, but now, and, and I was with the strongest military there is. And they would have made sure that like they would have done extra to make sure that I was okay because I was a visitor with them. But now imagine living, bro, I can't even like imagine. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll tell you what though. I, what I am trying to impart to my kids that might be a little bit different than, than, um, than anybody uh, that, that I talk to is I, I try to tell them you're going to hear stories of war heroes people are going to try to make people legends it's all bad every bit of it is bad uh somebody who gets a reputation for defending their home and killing 20 19 year olds who were trying to come and and, and take over their town um as a hero uh be very careful in yeah. in how you in how you lift up people that were forced into situations that they never should have been forced into in the first place they might be a, a hero to some people but it's a, it, they're they're a tragic hero and i will say that in 2001 when all of my friends were uh signing up for the military post 9 11 when i tried to enlist when everybody was gung-ho about going out and ridding the world of the wait ideologies. you tried to en enlist oh yeah Oh yeah, my, my me and my my two roommates, um, we like trained for a, a few months and 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 everything. Um, how how much it's a long was story, it a Pat Tillman influence on you? It, it didn't have anything to do with Pat Tillman for because it was just being a senior in high school and having a lot of your friends enlist. Yeah, and just sort of being directionless in in the first place. I ended up in Wyoming in AmeriCorps, um, but my roommate got blown up by an IED and got you know, had a, had a traumatic brain injury. Um, and I got a bunch of people I went to high school with that, you know, have trauma and a few that didn't come home or, or, or came home and didn't survive for, uh, very long. But what I remember at the time was being 18 years old in 2002, 
was like, hell yeah, we should definitely be the ones fighting this war. As a 37-year-old, looking back, 18, 19-year-olds are babies. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know how I couldn't see it then, just being in it. And I was like, of course, of course it falls to us. Of course it falls to our generation. Of course, 18 to 22 year olds should be out there as cannon fodder. Of course. Like we we are we are the strongest, most able-bodied, most strong-willed, most easily uh, mentally malleable, most physically peaked. Like, of course, we should be out there doing these things. Um, and now as like a late 30 something, I'm like, oh, those are children. <laughs> everything exactly. about this is terrible yep. everything about it's terrible and so that just trying to impart to my kids that like even these things that you think are inspiring of like ukrainian soldiers rising up of the president in military garb out in the streets of vladimir klitschko the klitschko brothers out there like defending all of that it can inspire you but it's actually all bad every yep. bit of it is terrible every bit of it is like the best you can make of a bad situation no, you are one hundred percent right, bro. It it's it's awful and it's terrible, and uh, yeah. So, and that's where we are at. And you know, please speak with your kids about this responsibly because, and I know some of you don't want to talk to your kids about it, but do because if you somebody don't talk, will. Yep, if you don't talk to them about it, somebody else will. Um. All right, uh, you guys, that is rights to a wrong for.